We'll die in 520. Somewhere in the south. We just left D.C. and are somewhere in the midst of a 28-hour dive down deep into the moral muscle of our country. Zooming past exits of dirt roads spinning out to nowhere, where warped old men sit on warped old porches, patting their warped old dogs on their scabby heads. Lou is muttering to him something to himself at the wheel, blaring some old punk rock and twitching, coming down off a mini thin ride. He looked like he needed a break, so I just popped six minis and took the wheel. The mini thins are the drug we're using to get across country. They sell them at truck stops across the nation. On the label, it says it's a medication to help your breathing, but it's pretty much just over-the-counter speed. Enough of them will tweak you out and keep you up for hours. Pop them down, and within about 30 minutes, your hair turns warm, your legs turn into electric coils, and your eyes are like ice. Besides all that, the mini thins have an unwanted side effect uh, that I caught the other day as I speed into Omaha. I was heavy on the mini. When I glanced in the mirror to see an armadillo I just ran over on the highway, when I saw my face, I knew shouted in fright. It wasn't me anymore. My expression was tight and chiseled. My teeth gritted tight. My eyes hardened and steely. I was turning into Charles Bronson. I immediately shook him off my face and tried desperately to slip into something kinder and happier. I thought of Hello Kitty and tried to weld her gentle, loving expression onto my torqued teeth. It worked for a while, but as I gained more velocity down the highway, Charles Bronson shoved Kitty off my face and I was back to the cold, hard look of speed. I caught the bastard in the mirror and slammed Hello Kitty back in pace, told her to stay put for the rest of the trip to Omaha. Hello Kitty and Charles Bronson battled savagely for possession of my expression. There is nothing I want to do except speed when I'm on the mini thin. I am electric, my hair is warm, I feel like making business deals. The planet is mine. We keep racing past these meat gas compounds that line the American highway system. All over the road, there are steel oases, festering pits of fossil fuel that run the engines and keep us speeding onto the next one. At each of these stops, there's a fast food restaurant where travelers fall into lines to buy meat. Our country runs on meat and gas. Gas to kill the meat. Meat burned to make more gas. Fuel lines pumping the oily goo through pipes across the country, thundering millions of tons under fields where maggot-eated cancerous cows eat black grass for a few weeks until someone shoots them in the head, rips them pieces freezes the chunks and ships them off to McDeath or Burger Hitler to feed the gun-toting, meat-eating, gas-chugging country that we are. It's a racket, and they have me trapped. There is nowhere to eat except meat. Something about the road makes you want to eat meat. Something about gas makes you want to drink Coke. That's another chemical concoction I'm sucking down. For some reason, I can't put it together. I hate Coke. My body doesn't need it, but when I'm on the road, I'm drinking it constantly. No. I must love Coke. That's right, I love Coke. Coke adds life. Life is Coke. All hail King Coke. I want a meat-flavored Coke soft drink. No, I want to bypass Coke and meat entirely. The next compound, I'll just shove the gas nozzle in my mouth and chug. Gas, meat, and Coke. Thank God for these breathing pills. It's all coming together 80 miles an hour as I am blazing down the highway, hair steaming, legs jolting, road speeding past, and cold train blowing at full blast. 14 shots to the dome, strictly ballroom, twice the van damage, mom, GC, three times dope, and I am finally seeing America. Meat. Coke. Gas. And speed.